All right, what's going on? It's Bobby Skinner talking Giants, the Week 12 film review. Giants lost to the Dallas Cowboys, obviously, in this game. Um, this one won't be as long as others. Going to go through a couple of passing concepts that the Giants like, a way they got some, you know, chunk yardage, obviously the big play to Slayton, uh, why I think that should be ran a little more often. Um, and then defensively, some things that worked, some things that they got beat in the run game, but I think that a Giants should actually steal. And we're going to go through those Gary Brightwell handoffs and – not just throw those away. And I think that can be a way to kind of give some new life to the Giants running game. So let's get into it. First, make sure to like, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. Let's get into it. First play, which is the, the very first play of the game. This seems to be the Giants' favorite first and second down passing concept um, the last couple of weeks. And what is it? We talked about it on last week's film review, the film review before that. This is actually the play Daniel Bellinger got his first touchdown on versus the Panthers. This is post-wheel. And the Giants are getting guys wide open in space. How are they doing it? How are they doing that? So first off, what is post-wheel? You put Richie James in motion. Hodgins is going to run this post route. Richie James is going to run the wheel. And when you're facing single high coverage, one of these guys should be one-on-one. -on -one. So ideally, you're getting protection. You're sitting in the pocket, and you're either throwing it to the wheel or the post. But what the Giants are doing with it to get guys open, so they're motioning the wheel route. You know, a lot of times you just line these guys up on one, on one side. They're motioning the wheel route, which is giving the attention to the defense that we got to get over there. So while they're motioning that, they're bringing the tight end from the back side of this pass and, and tagging some play action to it. So you tag the play action to it, it sucks up the eyes of the linebackers, right? Linebackers are never reading a tight end as their key. So they're getting caught up in the run. And then you get the tight end wide open underneath. But also, they're putting the dig on the backside. And you're just getting guys open to space. We saw Darius Slayton catch that a couple times last week. Um, you know, they're just getting guys open in space. And really the only way to beat this is just playing really good man coverage. Because if you play zone, I mean, we're... I mean... We're attacking all these zones on one side of the field. But you get Lawrence Cager wide open. 20-yard play to start the game. Good stuff. Now we're going to do some more play action. I don't even know what this play is called, but I like it. So it looks kind of like, you know, the, the famous, like, you know, play action. Maybe a sale concept where three levels, but... It's so weird where, so we got play action, right? And we are sneaking Slayton from the backside. We're sneaking Richie James from the backside. You're putting Hodgins on this over route. So it's like you're trying to sneak it to this guy. So originally when this play was happening on, live on TV, I'm like, throw it to Slayton. Throw it to Slayton. Let him get it. And then it looks like Richie James is supposed to leak out here, right? Well, nope. None of that. Chris Myrick on this block and release. It's going to leak out. Get an open field. Daniel Jones hangs in there. Stops on this on this uh, safety. Fires, fires a throw in there. I don't know how much of this is designed or not. Because Richie James gets his hands up in the way for this. So I don't know how much it's designed. Like, nope. Play that to the sideline, get that ball to Myrick. But for some reason, he didn't want to throw this ball to Slayton at the start of this. Like, I don't know if it's he was trying to get the Hodgins over here, but this ends up getting covered up. Nonetheless, gets it to Chris Myrick. Gets a nice chunk play. See it from this angle. So again, you see Slayton, you see Richie James coming across the formation. And it seems like he wants to get this ball to Hodgins. Stop. I mean, good job by DJ on this. Give a little pump with that too. Get him in the air. Set your feet. Point him. You find Myrick. Can't be stopped. Nice 25-yard gain by Chris Myrick. Um, so we're going to go through some negative plays on, on DJ too. Uh, that aren't going to be talked about. I know this is a little late because it's Monday after a Thanksgiving Thursday game. But these are the kind of things that get missed on the broadcast. 
So you motion Saquon Barkley in. Looks like you got, you know, you motion him out, bring him back in. Looks like you got man coverage, right? That's what you're looking. But you motion Richie James and... So... Got some... You know, it's, it's cover three, basically. So it's a form of man coverage, essentially. So DJ's got his eyes on this post to Darius Slayton. That's where his eyes are. You've got the post down here. You have the curl flat out here. You're not going to throw this. They do a good job. They cover the middle of the field in this sit route. So this, is, this turns into post snap. Either we're hitting Slayton on this post or we're checking it down. But if you're going to hit Slayton on this post, pull it now. You've got this safety on the right hash. If, if you want to bang that in there, I don't think anyone's going to be too mad at you for doing it. Now it's going against Diggs, who is awesome at baiting guys. So I understand not wanting to throw this. Here's my issue. Check it down. Get Saquon Barkley in space. Like if you're not going to bang this in there, you should be checking this down immediately. Said he turns his eyes back to the middle of the field. But if he saw that, like, hey, this is this is congested. Like, they've got two for one here. And if you say, well, he's coming back to this side. You turn your head on uh, to this curl route. Like, that's not going to be there at that time. Like, that's a timing route. And I guess, you know, you could say he's wanting to make a play with his legs. But you just... It's... Fine. Throw this ball to Saquon Barkley. He's got a one-on-one -on -one in space. If he doesn't get yards on it, that's on him. But he's essentially, you know, your best... Not essentially. He's your best playmaker on this offense. Even though he's looking a little banged up. So I just... We'll see it from this angle, too, so you get a better look at his eyes. You don't want to bang that in there. Just check it down. Throw it, check it down. So that's that. You know, you take a sack there, and that's you know that's that's just the difference between three and seven points right there. That's the difference between a five yard gain or you know a three yard gain at worst at worst, uh, and a, and a seven eight yard loss. Like that's that's that play right there could have been the difference in four points in this game. Next play. Uh, we are so first play of defense that we're going to go through. This is the interception for Rodarius Williams. Now I think Dak thought this was a free play because watch. Actually, let's just show it from this angle. Watch. Soon as Kayvon does that jump, they snap the ball. And a lot of times, when you get those free calls, you throw back shoulders, and that's what they throw here. And so let's see it from the other angle. Like, you notice these guys are leaving. They're not going off of the cadence. Like, so it seems like they're, you know, this is a free, they're thinking this is a free play. Dak fires in. I don't know if Dak thought this was the free play at this point. But nonetheless, you got to see the flag to be willing to throw that. So what did the Giants do on this? Well, they ran too high, which they rarely do. I think, let me see, I, I wrote it down. They ran too high, more so in this game than they did in most um, but still not a time. I think they ran it 11 times in this game, which is more than they do. So where are they running? They're running cover four quarters coverage where you got, he's playing a deep quarter, deep quarter, deep quarter. And then this corner out here playing a deep quarter. Then you have these three un underneath defenders. So regardless of if they think this is a free play, this is a really good job by Rodarius. He keeps inside leverage eyes on eyes on the quarterback. And make a jump on under underneath undercut this. Like yeah, maybe they thought this was a free play, but this is still good stuff by Rodarius. Turnover. See it from this side, and then look, Dexter Lawrence make pressure happen. I mean, that's a quick initial win. That you can argue, say, hey, he doesn't know this is a free play, so he's but he's getting the ball out quick. Like that type of stuff, it's it's you know what? Free plays 
Like that free play, even if that was a free play, that free play is a lot worse because of this initial pressure by Dexter Lawrence. Quick initial win. Interception by Rodarius. Let them know you got two feet in. Pump on them. Next play on defense. Uh, this is a play that the Giants just steal. And honestly, that's the main reason why I'm showing on this film review. This absolutely should be a play the Giants steal. Let's just watch it in full speed. They're going to show inside zone and then run speed option. And then you get a big play for Zeke. So for a Giants offense that is having a hard time getting Saquon Barkley involved, I think this is something you could do. So you have a stack box. One, two, three, four, six blockers, seven defenders in the box. So watch every watch all the offensive linemen. They are showing like zone and not just zone, like we're getting outside the tackle zone. And guess what? Ezekiel Elliott's showing the exact same thing. So what do these linebackers read? They're running inside zone. And then they just turn that into speed option. O'Shane Zimenez does a bad job on this. He should he needs to just stay out in this lane and let Julian Love be responsible for the quarterback. He tries to make a play on Dak. I don't know if he's thinking it's a draw play or, or what. But like that. That's not like that's not what your rules are. Play the edge. Play the edge. Eleven man football. Trust your guys. O'Shane jumps inside, pitch to Zeke. Poor Julian Love, who's just playing his gap, gets clotheslined by uh, Dalton Schultz, and you got Zeke off. You got you were Zeke. The only team he averages five yards a pop against now is the New York Giants. Now they're going to score a touchdown, and it just shows how one guy. We just saw how one guy screwed up a play. Now, by the way, I, like I said, I think the Giants should run that play. They obviously have the athletic quarterback and Daniel Jones. Just throw some misdirection, you know, try it. I think that's something that they should try at least. Um, you know, teams are really getting downhill on the Giants running game. So that could be a way to take advantage of it. This next play, they score a touchdown. And I want to show how one man screwing up allows it. Now they bring a lot of the things the Cowboys did in this game because the Giants like to play from stack boxes is they would bring the wide receiver in just to give them better run fits because they trust their offensive linemen and tight ends to block our D linemen and linebackers. But just, so let's let's go through this. They're running zone. Everybody's stepping together. Gap accounted for. 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 Gap not accounted for. What happens? Big jelly. Slow off the ball, trying to fire off low, and Terrence Steele uses a vet move and just dumps him. And that's how you get an open gap. That's how you let every single other guy does their job. Now, this wouldn't be great either because, again, they brought in the wide receiver, so now Julian loves having the two gap, but you don't want your safety having the two gap. And that's how you get wide open touchdown lanes. So Mike McFadden's like, I got to get back in, you know, back in this gap. But you got all pro guard Zach Martin blocking you. So if you, even if you do jump back in this gap, well, Zeke will jump back in here. So. And the Cowboys get a touchdown. And you get Jihad Ward looking around like, what, what, what just happened? And then you get Terrence Steele. He knows damn well. I did that. Like, that wasn't Ezekiel Elliott. That wasn't my offensive coordinator. That was 100% me making that play. So that's frustrating. All right, back on offense. This is the big throw to Darius Slayton. It's 9-4-9. So this is that shallow cross that we've seen the Giants have run. But they use it in a different way where they bring the running back out on this. And then you have Richie James sitting on this. And then you just put your outside receivers on nine go routes. Give guys a chance. You say, well, they don't have the protection to do this. Um, 
did they have the protection to do this on this play? You're getting single high looks all game long. Do more of this. Darius Slayton had like 17 deep targets in 2019 with a really bad offensive line. Give your guys... This this out of seven points to the board. DJ can throw this ball. This doesn't take freaking processing the hell out of a defense. Give guys chances to make plays. That's speed. Able to go... Let guys go up and make plays. Get vertical. We see Mark Lewinsky gets beat here. Again, he's reading the shallow cross. Keeping that safety on the left hash. Just send it. Put some faith in your guys. Put some faith in eight. Even though we're going to hit some negative plays on eight. Put some faith in 86. I know you guys didn't want him. I know you guys wanted to trade him. Put some faith in the freaking guy. Because that's how the Giants are going to be able to get into the playoffs. Is putting faith in some of your offensive players in the passing game. Because what they're doing right now is not going to be it long term. You can't just lean. It's like Teams are, are keying in on the run. Saquon looks a little banged up. You've got a bad combination there. You're going to have to start doing some things through the air. Richie James can play slot wide receiver. Wide receiver too. Yeah, that's a huge issue with Hodgins. You know, hopefully Bellinger coming back helps. But put some faith. You got to put some faith in these guys to make plays, or you're gonna, or you're gonna, they're gonna miss out on the playoffs. It's, again, and not every team is the Dallas Cowboys who have, you know, one of the best front fours we've, you know, you know, sack producing front fours we've ever seen, and corners who pick the ball off. Put some faith in your guys. All right, next we're back on defense. Third and third. So the Giants ran cover zero. Five times in this game. It's like, oh, well, it's Wink Martindale. He runs cover zero. No, he had ran it less than ten times all year. They've shown the threat of cover zero. This was they. This was the game they ran it. And guess what? They didn't do it even out of cover zero looks. Does anything like this pre-snap look like cover zero to you? No, but that's exactly what it is. It's third down and eight. And watch. We're going to blitz Darnay. We're going to blitz the linebacker. We are going to send all five guys on a line of scrimmage, which they usually do in their cover one looks. So we're going to send all these guys, and we are going to be manned up. Bam, bam. We're not playing center field safety anymore. We are manned up, man coverage, man coverage. We got a free rusher. We got Kayvon bending the edge. And that puts pressure on Dak Prescott to put a perfect pass. And it's not perfect. See it from this angle. Good job by Kayvon. Obviously, he had an awesome game. Bend the edge. Free rusher. Jalen Smith coming free. Reads the running back. Loops around. Third down and eight. No checking this down, Dak. You're going to get hit. And you're going to miss the throw. So, I know people are like, ah, don't blitz so much. They actually played a little more too high. They've played a lot more too high coverages in this game than they have all year. You know? But on the money down, it's like, well, our, like, you can get beat in zone too. These corners will get beat in zone coverage too. Um, Now, here's the, the interception to Julian Love. Two high safeties. This is very simple. We're literally just running cover two man. Man man coverage, man coverage, man coverage, man coverage. Linebackers manned up on the back. And then two safeties high. This is what pressure does. Cave on pressure on Tyler Smith. Leo looping around. Gets his ball out. And guess what? CeeDee Lands beats Darnay Holmes. Not the greatest of throws. He's got to come back to it. Ball gets popped up. And instead of it just having a center field safety here, you got a safety back here. And Julian Love intercepts. I think Julian Love has five career interceptions. I think three of them are on tip passes. Uh, week two versus the Bears in 2020. Last year, Monday Night Football versus the Chiefs. And then this one. Again, good job by Kayvon. Using speed to power. Good job using speed to power. 
That allows Leonard Williams to loop around. Interception. Big play for the Giants. Now, Daniel Jones almost put it, gave it right back to them. Remember that first play we went to? Post wheel. Motion backside dig. Uh, we're gonna, their Giants run the same, same exact play, but it's just to the left. So again, you put Richie James in motion. Hodgins on the post. Richie James on the wheel. Chris Meyer coming across the field. And then Darius Slayton on the dig. So this is this is covered, right? This is unlike Lawrence, the Lawrence Cage or 20 yard catch. This is covered. But what does that mean? Well, the post wheel's covered. Darius Slayton's open. Now, I don't know why the hell Richie James does not just stops on this route. Go. Clear out space. That shit that pisses me off. Okay, so that's where we could talk about if this was an interception, this partial blame. Because even though Daniel Jones, this interception is on him, this guy shouldn't be here. Unless they're trying to throw a back shoulder on this, and I just doubt that that's what they're trying to do. Of DJ you know, rolling to his left. So how does this interception happen? DJ just missed. Now, they call the defensive holding on this right here, thankfully. But he fires it in there and just misses. And that should have been an interception. Like that, that holding didn't really have much to do with the play. So they, they lucked out on that one. Um, and this is the, another, a negative, this is, I mean, the Giants lost, so we're going negative. This is where if you were like, they got to move on from DJ type person, this is the type of stuff that would give you ammo. This is the end of the half. End of the half, DJ scrambling. He's got his eyes on Tanner Hudson. Tanner Hudson breaks up field. You have all of this green grass. And DJ has his eyes on him. He has his eyes on him. And these we have an offensive coordinator and a head coach who had guys who 100% pull the trigger on this. And he tucks it and runs. Yeah, this is end of the half. Pull the trigger on this. He's got his eyes on it. And it's just like the playing in the contract year. It's just like made him worse like these. I've seen a Daniel Jones before that throws this ball. It was beaten out of him by a couple coaches. But like that's those are the type of plays that will get you a second contract. I don't think operating this offense as perfect, like, the, you know, he's got stuff against him, but those are the type of plays where it's like, I just want to see you throw that. Even if he, even if he missed that, I am like, obviously I don't want him to miss it, but I'm encouraged. I'm like, I'm glad he's throwing that. I'm glad he's throwing that. I just want to see, I want to see that. I want to see that aggressiveness out of him. And I know they have shitty wide receivers and battle line and blah, blah, blah. I want to see that throw. Uh, on defense here, here we go. Third and goal at the 15 yard line. This should be a stop. And people say, ah, I, I, Wink Martindale's running these third down blitzes, right? These third down blitzes. This, that's, you gotta adjust. You don't have the corners. I don't think he has the corners to not run these third down blitzes. Cause guess what? We run a fucking four man rush. We run man coverage with two safeties high and we get beat. Now, here's where you can... I, I saw this on the broadcast. I'm like, what the hell happened? They have two safeties high. C.D. Lamb is getting so much attention because he was cooking everybody that he went up against that they are making sure C.D. Lamb does not beat him. So you have this safety playing outside. Julian Love playing inside on this. Darnay and man, they are making sure he doesn't go. But guess what? You have Nick McLeod out there. He's playing inside leverage. Trying to, you know, you don't want to get beat on those inbreakers. He knows, like, that post snap that Love is going to go this way instead of helping with him. Plays that inside leverage. Dalton Schultz, who's a good tight end, plays through him. Because if Schultz breaks this off here, this is not going to be a touchdown. This would probably be broken up. 
And it's just pitch and catch for Dak and Dak and Schultz. So there were adjustments. But that's I mean that's just a good connection. Like eventually you guys gotta play football. Um okay, so here's the play that got talked about a million a million times. And what is it? It's the fourth and one. It's the dreaded fourth and one. Uh, I am dreading talking about this play, but I'm going to talk about it. But first, guess what I'm going to talk about? I'm going to talk to you guys about Ridge Wallet. Uh, this uh, at, this breakdown was brought to you by Ridge Wallet. Uh, it ha- has room for cash to up to 12 cars. There's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. Yeah, it's that freaking good. The wallet has over 50,000 five-star reviews. The durable material means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it that they'll let you test drive for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. Get the best offer with Ridge.com slash John Boy. And right now you can save up to 40% through December 22nd. That's Ridge.com slash John Boy to save up to 40%. But a link will be in the description. All right, fourth and one. Good play call. You run these slants. You put Saquon in the flats from the left side of him. And this is a miss. This puts on the back hip of Saquon Barkley. This is fourth and one. If you put this ahead of in front of him, there's a lot of space here. So this is undoubtedly a miss, right? But there's a million things that are going to be said about this. Is this guy in the way? I don't know. I don't know how much you're betting on like. I don't know. I'm not going to sit here. You You think whatever you want. All I know is that this ball goes out ahead of him and it's a big play. And this is a pretty hard ball to catch by Saquon, but he should still catch it. There wasn't enough velocity on this to where it's like, just like, ah, he can't catch that. He should still probably catch that. And that's essentially the Giants losing the game. Now, but for next week, this this film is for next week. Line up Gary Brightwell, tailback Chris Myrick as tight end. And then you have Saquon Barkley as a wide receiver, but kind of like a wing back in this. And I think this is the way you're going to be able to gain some rushing. Because just... Do what the kind of what the Ravens do. Make defenses think, 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 think. Pull guys, move guys around. And that's what this does. You bring Chris Myrick across the formation as a wham block. You give a fake handoff to Saquon Barkley. Like, he sees what does this linebacker see? Or whatever position number six is. He sees Chris Myrick on the wham block. He sees Saquon Barkley on the end around. And he runs out here. And Landon, uh, you know, Vander Esch just reads this. He's playing his gap. And that gives a wide open lane for Gary Brightwell to make a play. I'm serious. I, just keep using this stuff. I kind of wish they didn't use it at this point in the game. Now we got Gary Brightwell as the wing back. Chris Myrick, Saquon in the backfield. Again, put Chris Myrick in surge motion. Like you're you're gonna toss the ball to Saquon. And guess what? Look at these look at we have our left tackle and our left guard pulling. We have our center down blocking, and look at these linebackers. And look at these linebackers. Your linebackers block themselves. Glowinski down block. Jack Anderson kick out. Andrew Thomas leading up. Jack Anderson wraps it. Use that stuff. And 
And then the last play, just let's finish it off with a real negative. Cowboys going to run play action. This ball is going to go to Jake Ferguson. What happens here? So they're in man coverage, right? They motion this guy. McLeod chases him. They run play action. You see McLeod's manned up over here. Micah McFadden goes to cover this tight end. Now he gets washed up by Jihad Ward. Good job by Jihad. So Micah McFadden turns in the pass rush. How does Jake Ferguson get this wide open? How does he get this wide open? And then jump over Jason Pinnock. Well, it's because of one of two guys screwed up. Either Julian Love or Jalen Smith. And I'm willing to bet that it's Jalen Smith. Because this tight end coming across the formation is... The responsibility of Micah McFadden. You see Julian Love like bumping Jalen Smith. So you think Julian, like Julian Love is, is taking the responsibility of man coverage on the back. And then you have Pender, or Jake Ferguson come across the uh, formation. And we have Jalen Smith doing what? I mean, this is like video game. You've, you turn the, con you know, your controller went dead. And then he jumps over Jason Pinnock. I mean, come on. That's Jake Ferguson right there. Like, we love Jake Ferguson, but our, our issue was, like, he's not the most athletic guy in the world. And he just jumped over Jason Pinnock. And the Giants lose. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. Uh, hopefully we'll get a victory breakdown from the Commanders game. I, I need it. I need a victory breakdown. Let's, let's win some damn games. I'm going to be there to make sure the Giants win. So I appreciate you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, let's go Big Blue.